Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to have a look at padding and how we can use it in SwiftUI to apply spacing to our view so let's get straight into it. So we usually use padding when we want to space, add space to a view and let's see how this works in SwiftUI. So we've already got a text view on the screen here and it has some padding around it but let's actually see that by adding a border after it. So after the padding we'll say border one and then we'll say border dot red and then we'll set the width to one. And if you want to learn more about borders, I actually have a video called Border in Swift UI that you should check out. And now you should actually see the border being drawn around the padding for our Swift UI view. So what's going on here? So with this padding modifier, it's actually adding 16 pixels to inside of the view to the left, top, bottom, and right. So we actually have the padding here. But what about if we want to specify specifically the value that we want to apply to all the edges? Well, we can do this by simply passing a number into the function. So what we're going to do is just add this text view within a VStack, and then we're going to copy this and create a duplicate of it below, like so. And then this time, rather than us having the padding where we're using the system default, we're going to specify here four. And then you run this on the SwiftUI preview, we should realize that this is now smaller than the other one. So now what we've said is rather than having um, the default, we actually want to specify that we want four on all the edges of that view. But sometimes we may want to be even more specific and we can do this by specifying which edge we want the padding to be applied onto. So again, we're going to copy this and then create another version of it. And this time rather than having padding, of four, we're this time going to specify that we want it to only be on the left hand side. And we do that by specifying leading. So we don't have any padding on the top, bottom and right, but we do on the left hand side. And you can even see this more if I was to increase to something like 40. And you can see that it's a lot bigger now. And this isn't just limited to leading. If you wanted to, if you hit the dot notation, you can actually see leading, trailing, and some other options as well that you can apply padding onto. To as well, we can actually chain padding one after the other. So just like we specify leading, we can actually use this modifier again. And rather than it being leading, we can specify that we want it to be trailing. And now we have our padding on the left and the right hand side. So we can actually chain padding one after the other. But there's actually a shorthand way of writing this. So rather than specifying the leading and the trailing, we actually could just say that we want the horizontal padding to be 40. So let's copy this. And then we'll remove the one of the options. And this time we'll type out horizontal. And as you can see, we get the same effect, but this time we've only got it on one line rather than having to write out twice for two. And the same applies for top and bottom. Rather than just using horizontal, we would just change this to vertical. And now we have vertical padding on the top and the bottom of our view. So how does padding work in relation with other views? Well, if we wanted to, we can actually use padding to space it, space out views between each other. So let's actually see how we can do this. And we're gonna add in a V stack, and within that V stack, we're going to add some content. So I'm just gonna type this out and then we're gonna break it down. So now we have our V stack here. But notice how when we're drawing our borders, you can see here that the text here is what's causing this container view to actually expand on its width. And we don't actually have any spacing within the VStack. So what we're going to do is actually add in some padding. So the first modifier we're going to use is padding here. Cool. Now, just one thing to note, it's actually really important that when you're applying padding, you apply it in the right order. So let's say for example, if rather than me adding padding here, I added it after the background, you'll see what effect we get. So let's add in the padding here, like so. And you'll notice that we get this effect, but why do we get this effect? Well, what's happening in Swift UI is we're saying that on our V stack, we actually want to give it a background of gray, which is this view here. And then we apply a padding onto it after setting the background, which is why you have this white space around the view. So if you want to set a background and make it fill the whole view, then what you want to do is make sure that your padding is applied before your background. So let's just add this back in and delete the padding here. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to add in some spacing to actually push down this text view. And what we can do is actually give our image some bottom padding. So what we're going to do here 
before we set our border, we're going to say padding dot bottom 50. And you can see here that that pushes down our content all the way. And if I was to type in here an even larger value like 150, you can see that it gets even bigger. So sometimes if you actually want to apply some spacing between your views, you can actually use padding and use this to actually push views away from one another. Cool. So that was everything in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate some feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel as well as hitting the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.